Hey everyone, I am going live over here at Sola Salons for Convos with Kimmy. <laughs> oh, Diana just joined. Um, she is my guest, special guest today, Diana Schmidtke. So Diana, all you have to do is request to join me if that is okay. Let's see. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, thank you for all the waves. All right, Diana, you might have already requested, but it didn't come up. So maybe try one more time. Somebody else is requesting, but um, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, let's see here. Who is going? There we go. Diana. Let's see if this is gonna work. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yay! Hey, ladies. Hi! Hi! <laughs> oh my gosh, you look gorgeous it. today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um I'm in my home and look, I have like a Barbie Jeep behind me and all this, you know, working mom Thanks. stuff. And pink. <laughs> it is pink. Well, um, a real quick, I just want to say to everyone that's joining us, this is uh, my fourth episode of Combos with Kimmy Kisses. And um, I started doing these live interviews, and I'm so grateful to Sola for letting me do it on their uh, Instagram. But I have all these amazing relationships with all these amazing people in our industry that are so influential, not only to me, but for so many, and I picked this lovely lady uh, to, um, and I know she couldn't say no to me because we're girlfriends, <laughs> and uh, just to um, pick her brain. So Diana is uh, like famous in the industry. She um, has such an amazing story. She is a self-made freelance artist and she is a celebrity uh, male groomer, a specialist, so a stylist. And, and um, if you ever look at like uh, any celebrity uh, that's a male, like on the cover of GQ. And I mean, I can't even think of all the magazines that you've had the cover. And she also works with them when they do interviews and when they do red carpet events. But what's also cool about Diana is she has her hand in everything in the industry. So all these fun events I get to go through for Sola, I always run into her because she's helping other brands develop things for their product lines. She works behind the scenes. She's always giving back to our industry. So I just thought it'd be such a fun conversation to have you today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now tell <laughs> us, tell us real quick. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just say one cute story. I, after we hit it off, we obviously are good friends now. She called me a few years ago and was like, Hey, what's up? I kind of miss you. And um, what are you doing? Like, I'm in London, and, and I'm doing Ben Affleck's hair for a red carpet of it or something like that. And I was like, um, well, I'm making shake and bake pork chops for me and Evie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love Diana, because she's like, ooh, tell me your recipe. Like, you are just so down to earth. And then, you know, and then in the last breath, you're like, I got to go to this red carpet thing. So I love you and take care, you know, like, that's what's so cool about you. But anyway, so this morning, we were going to do this live earlier, but um, your agent called you and you had to do a celebrity guest today, right? Yes. Yeah. So today, well, everybody's doing everything from home. So yeah. uh, it's really personal. Uh, but we did some promotions for Family Guy this morning. With oh. Farland, yeah. So he was on a Zoom with four of the other talent. And so I just got him ready. And, and then we stopped at the beach on the way home. My husband and I made a day out of it. And now we're back here. <laughs> oh, well, I know you probably yeah. rushed a little to do this for me. So we all are very grateful. Um, it's cute. Everyone's saying, like, you're a humble queen. And I'm kind of oh. scrolling through all of these. Um, oh, you presented at my beauty school, Diana, and you are one of my heroes. Oh, isn't that awesome to hear that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, and, I love, you know. I love the students. I, I love know. The, the fresh, um, 
they're just so open, you know? Yeah. They're just so open. I love it. I love it I, so much. I do too. Yeah. I like being with the future professionals and stuff because yeah. they just have this energy and it, it gives me light, you know, to, to yeah. whenever you're around them. So that's so cool. Sometimes they think I'm there for them, but I really think they're there for me. I know, me to, too. To remind you, like, oh, wow, I really know a lot. Or yeah. there, there's a lot to learn. Or you have your whole head, your, your whole life ahead of you. I mean, I don't know who inspires more, them <laughs> or me. <laughs> well, so I told everyone kind of, what you're doing you actually didn't grow up in LA but when you moved out there you became a freelance artist and what I love is you could have been this amazing rock star because your your work speaks for itself you're like one of the most requested your work is beautiful everyone should go and check out her Instagram and see the people she gets to uh, work on but what a, I lot, a lot of the the actual work can be found at dianashmicki.com Okay. So that's the big um, yeah. one and just a lot of media stuff there too. I think that sometimes hairdressers forget whether it's locally or nationally or internationally that it's not just social media. People still do read the papers, especially people with money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so and fun. you know, um, but I guess when I first kind of got introduced, you know, I have a Paul Mitchell background as being an educator, and I know that they, uh, you know, hired you many times, you know, as an advisor, and especially when they launched their Maverick brand, you helped a lot in development of product lines. And uh, But what was great is they put you on stage, too, to educate all of us. And I think that was probably my biggest connection. And I don't want to say anything bad because, you know, we love our barbers. They're your family and they're my family. And, and, um, but I'm not a barber. I mean, like, look at me. I don't, you know, I don't have the look. And I really connected to you because I like doing men's hair. And you kind of have this way as the simplicity of, breaking down like dialogue and how to talk to your male guests just differently. You can still be yourself, but making them feel comfortable and, and not just addressing their hair. You can talk about how they take care of their skin and, and really become a coach to them. And I was really inspired by that. And I have been able to grow my salon numbers and male guests, like in my st salon studio at Sola. So I, I love that you give back to our industry that way. Do you have any top two, three tips that you want to share with anyone if they want to start embarking on that kind of business? I mean, I think the number one with guys is just the way they think very differently. It's okay to accept that they usually are motivated by getting the girl or getting some kind of attention. So <laughs> you have to... Remember that everything that they ask you, sometimes they won't ask you, but they, they always want to know the why. So mm -hmm. one example I can give is like, if I gave you a lipstick virtually right now, you would say, oh my gosh, thanks. But if I hand a guy a product, he's going to look at it and say, why do I need that? Yeah. So the, the dialogue always has to be with the undertone of answering why this works for you. It's just very different and never to be taken for granted um, that they just know what this pomade or paste or cream. You mentioned also for the kind of work that I do, um, I have to know hair, skin, and body. So yeah. when it comes to body, that's kind of easy and maybe not the fun part because that's nose hairs, that's your beard. Sometimes when they're wearing a collared shirt, no tie, yeah, I'm, I'm in there. Making sure those, especially, <laughs> especially with the client. Those body. unruly. Yeah. <laughs> or at least touch it with hair mascara so you don't have all this gray coming out, you know, laying oh, wow. their, on their black suit. Um, but yeah, any anything hair, uh, sometimes it could be like arm hair if it's too much, too long, too this, too that. Um, so it's like a total package. The skin part of it, well, we all know that every guy has some type of I don't put a full face ever on any of my guys. You can see that on the red carpet sometimes where someone looks too bronzed or a little too perfect. With guys, you don't want to take away all the imperfections like you would if you had a female client yeah. because those are the things that make them look manly. And yeah. the last thing I want to do is make them 
look or feel too done up. And I always think on the carpet, you're peer to peer. So you can just like when we wear makeup, you can tell we're wearing makeup. So I try to go <clears throat> pretty light on the, uh, on the makeup, but it's skincare. Mm -hmm. So it's the underneath it all. So if you have good skin, you're going to have that good foundation, just like when it comes to hair. Yeah. This might be a really good time to mention something I wanted to share. Uh, the biggest issue you can imagine that I deal with at work is thinning. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk just briefly, just to give people something to explore on their own. I'm a huge fan of Google. When people ask me, how do you know what you know? I don't believe YouTube is beauty school, but I do <laughs> believe that there is some really good stuff out there. But I wanted to talk a little about this because in the pandemic, people have been really stressed out. So yeah. <clears throat> you can tell I even haven't gotten my hair colored because this state has been closed for a lot longer than every other state, even though we're allowed to open. But there's basically what I want to share is uh, thinning is the biggest issue that I face. Yeah. And, and I know from my dermatologist that even women right now, it's not uncommon for just loads of stress and and um, hairs to come out. We all know 80 to 100 is normal, but sometimes it comes in clumps. And sometimes that could be what we're going through right now. A lot of people are stressed, makes sense, or it could be hormonal, or you could have just had a child. So I came across this really cool product line called Hum. Okay. And I know you can get it online or at Sephora. This one is called red carpet for glowing skin and shiny hair, <laughs> um, which we love. And then this other one are just these little gummies. Oh. So it's, like a, it's like a daily vitamin that strengthens your hair with biotin and B12. And uh, one of the vitamins no one talks about is folic acid, which most of us have low levels of it. Mm -hmm. So this is just really what's happening to us is hopefully temporary. I'm not saying that this would cure alopecia areata, but here's one other brand, which is a little more powerful and it's called Nutrafol. Nutrafol. And they make this for men and women. So this happens to be the woman one because I personally take it. I can awesome. tell you that I was born with really fine hair. I'm actually working on a lot of videos to um, here in the near future to, to launch them about my own hair thinning journey might not look like I have thin hair, but I actually do. <laughs> so I wanted to <clears throat> kind of just remind people that there are simple solutions that can help support the hair. So we got home and Nutrafol. Each one works a little differently. I just find this brand to be really fun. Yeah. But here's another one. Beauty. Beauty Z's. Beauty so like you can't sleep. So when you sleep, I love it. Well, yeah. I just love that about you, Diana, because you are such a source. I think that people see you, and you you do get to be in the entertainment world. So you know, people are attracted to bringing you things and having you try things, and so you're just you. It's in your nature to share and give back all the information. When they're good, yeah, we, you um, know, and and I love that. We talk and a lot. you know, on that note, I wanted to mention. I'm going to bring out, like, I have your book right here. <laughs> She's giggling. But I've actually read this book a couple of times. And I just love that you could be this rock star, right? And, and but you still give back. And this is such a cool book. Everyone should look it up. It's called Shortcuts. But what she's done is she's talking about having a successful career, like, in the fashion and entertainment industry. And I just, um, I didn't know if I put a picture up earlier about that, but I just love that you do everything on like how to make your kit. And that's why you always have these little goodies that you give us. And then, you know, to like how you should probably get paid and how to book with an agent and all of that. And I think what's neat is we would all love to have that fun lifestyle, but I think in our own homes, in our own city, especially, independent contractors like Sola, you know, independent salon owners, you know, they, um, you know, they have a lot more opportunity to reach out and do different things. So they could like reach out to a local TV station or a news station. And yeah. so anyway, this book is just so great because you talk about photographers and 
like if they wanted to do something for Naha or whatever. I mean, it's just a wealth of information. So I want everyone to check that out because I've really enjoyed it. Um, What's first, interesting is it came out the very first version. I think you might have the second. Okay. I find it fascinating that I wrote it the very, the first edition in 2008 was when oh, it was published. Yeah, this one's 212. Then, yeah, so I should probably, because what changes it's, it's fascinating what changes might be like the name of oh, yeah. agencies out here or in New York, some merge, some fall apart, some new ones come, agents leave, start their own thing. But other than that, it's not outdated at all. That's no. how you do it. No, these it's really are, simple. These are the steps. And really what I wrote it for too is, wouldn't you rather know that you, that that sounds like way too much work than to spend your whole career thinking, I'm going to do this and you don't even know where to start. Yes. And I, I wrote that. it, just read it so you can figure out how that works for you. Not everyone has the opportunity to move to New York or Los Angeles. Miami has work, San Francisco, uh, Washington. Like there are places for work. No one's saying you have to move, you know, but hopefully you figure out some of those, read those tools and then you can, apply it to your local community. I mean, before and afters are still a oh. really good deal and we need feel good stuff right now. Oh, we totally know? do. And they're asking where to get the book. I think I got mine on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. I think I was going to, and then I think you mailed me one, but I can't remember, <laughs> but I, I still don't have you signed it. So I need to put it in my bag for whenever we're doing our events and I get to see you again. <laughs> but, um, but that's what's so great about it. And like you said, it could just be in the simplest form of, um, you know, people wanting to hire a photographer to do, you know, some photo work in their own studio to build their brand or, or, you know, we have our Sola Genius app that is our booking site, but we can put all our images on there. So there's just so many great you, like, you little You do need tips. some professional images. It's always great. And one of the tips in the book is where to find photographers. And that's so easy. If you're just starting out, go to the college and talk to the professor of photography or the art department or whomever, and just start soliciting people locally um, that have the same interest in fashion. You don't want somebody who, um, you know, might be drawn to architecture. You really want to find somebody who, who wanting to also specialize in fashion because what you see with your eyes is not at all what you see through the lens of the camera. Oh, so I know. I start to learn what to look for and look at the screens and look and keep going back and forth, particularly in TV and film because, so I do two different types of stuff. I do the freelance, which they consider non-union work. Okay. Um, that is your red carpets. That's your promotional tours. So I'm flying all over the world with them um, promoting. We might be in France one day, London the next day. We might be in Spain the next day, Argentina, Brazil, China, you name it. Wow. Um, and you're traveling with them, and that's all non-union work. Anything that has to do with actual TV show or film, and also, um, oddly, uh, Disneyland has a little subsection to our oh. hair and makeup artist union. I didn't know that. Um, but TV and film is, for the most part, union work. And all that is uh, expressed in the book, those differences. Because if you don't understand the industry, how are you going to make it work for you? That's number exactly. one. Exactly. So I am a part of the hair and makeup artist union. I saw recently when salons were shut down and sometimes folks would say, other artists, I follow everything I care. Even though I don't work in a salon, I really truly care. That's one of the reasons my own hair needs some help. Um, can't wait to get colored. But you, we do have a union. That was what a lot of artists were saying. And it's called Local 706 in Los Angeles. New York has another chapter and a different name. But um, yeah, we have pensions and union and, uh, and health insurance. It's extremely difficult to get into the union, but it's not impossible. And I, my big hope with the book is to show people look my parents didn't have money I didn't yeah. I, I wasn't one of those lucky kids who who had all this financial support and endless resources I didn't 
In fact, the very first time I moved to LA, I failed and I had never even been here. I just loaded up my car with a friend and we came out here and we were young and dumb and I had to go home and <laughs> I ended up waiting tables and doing like cocktail waitress, bartender, you name it. Um, and also it was weird coming from Chicago, the mentality out here. Now it's been 24 years, nothing bothers me, but it was such a huge adju adjustment and I think it's important to note that I completely failed. And yeah. then I had to go home, save more money, take more classes. This is way before the internet and social media was covering these types of things. So I actually had to make phone calls to mm -hmm. salon distributors and ask them, how can I learn extensions? How can I learn more on styling? Because I actually started off with a focus on hair color. And mm -hmm. most people don't know that. They think I'm just this men's grooming. That evolved over time. And one of my other favorite messages to sh share with artists is you might have an idea of what you like better, cutting or color or both, or you know a certain um, niche, so to speak. But it's really important to stay open because if you stay too attached to an idea, like I wanted to be the best hair colorist in Chicago, perhaps I wouldn't have the great pleasure of making hot guys hotter. <laughs> That is true. And, you know, I think even in your book, if I remember right, you even said that 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 wasn't your path and it actually chose you. Correct. So I love that you're saying to be open. And I always say that you have to get uncomfortable to grow. Right. Yes. And and I love that because if you're not open to these little opportunities coming your way or something that sparks in you, then, um, you know, you, you're shutting yourself off to other things. And and, you know, our community at Sola, you know, we have the freedom to do whatever we want. We are the salon owner and we're the stylist and everything. So I just, that's what a big reason why I wanted you on Combos for Kimmy, because you like have taken advantage of those leaps of faith. And I'm so glad you shared that, you know, that you even failed a little and then had to oh, yeah. re redo it. And I think we oh, all everybody been thought there. I was crazy. Even my <laughs> own parents, they're like, what? Why, why do you want to move to LA? How are you going to make it in film and TV? How are you going to? And those are great questions. And yeah, you're like, I'm not wrong. Don't but know. <laughs> yeah, the, you just have to. And I'm, you know what? I'm thinking of the audience right now and think about how many times you guys said and made that decision I'm going to go on my own. And whether it was your old salon or your salon friends or your own family would be like, how are you going to manage that? And you're mm -hmm. always how to kind of defend yourself and say, don't worry, I have a plan or I have support and I have this team of people behind me. And it's almost like until you accomplish it, everybody is rightfully concerned for you. But at the same time, you can't listen to any of them because you just mm -hmm. make your plan. You know what you're doing. Have the confidence in yourself. Listen to only your own inner voice. Because there's lots of other voices. Um, <laughs> and, and just go for it. And the good news is once you do it, my parents now will call on the night of the Oscars and just who did you do yeah and I'm like wow even you guys take it for granted that that I'm there, you know there or getting people ready and they're not wrong I I usually do have a client I'm very lucky who's nominated sometimes two sometimes I might have a presenter sometimes I might have a presenter and uh, uh, a nominated actor yeah but it's it makes me giggle every time because when I was younger they they couldn't process this no. weird, weird Dream. And, you know, and I guess in beauty school, you're always called a little weird. So you kind of get tough skin. Yeah. And so when people were like, how are you going to do that? I just, I just mind my P's and Q's and tunnel vision. <laughs> you know, I, I think that that's where we're always been a kindred spirit too. I mean, I, when you're saying that, I know that the people listening, um, especially at Sola can connect with some of that, you know, being the very first at Sola salons ever. You know, we didn't even know what the building was going to look like. Like what right. the studios were going to look like. Nothing. And I was like, I'm in. I'm in. I can do I'm it. I'm in. I can do it. I can do it. I, I saw it. You know. Yeah. And and like you said, those voices. People were like, We love you, Kimmy. But um, this is are crazy. You sure? What are you doing? Like you're yeah. so successful. Why are you? This is like going backwards. I'm like, Oh, you don't get it. It's okay. Oh, yeah. You will. You will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, I wanted to say a couple of shout outs. There's someone here. She says, that's my mentor. Go girl, Isabella. And Hi. then, then Hi, there's, Isabella. And then there's a Kimberly. She says, Diana, what's up, lady? Congrats. One of the most beautiful makeup artists I still know to this day. Aw. 
And then, uh, oh, Marcus is here saying hello. Hi, Marcus. I may be sitting his cat right now. Okay, <laughs> so I also wanted to go into um, the next really cool part of um, like your life. <laughs> so you, um, you know, have helped with many brands and helped develop product lines. And so you've been in product innovation centers and stuff throughout your whole career and, and such a great voice and resource for stuff. So then you've kind of taken that to the next level and you've started um, a brand of sunscreen called Sombra. Am I saying it right? Yeah. And okay. Sombra Cause I don't have the cool. <laughs> Sombra. Uh, Sombra. And, Sombra's um, fine. Sombra's fine. But what um, I think is cool that I really wanted you to explain to us is um, you know, I live in Colorado and we have 25% more chance of getting skin cancer because we are in the mile high city. So we're so close to the sun. So, you know, skincare is huge here, but also, you know, in, you know, the tropical areas, I know that sunscreen is having to evolve because it's ruining our oceans. Right. And we don't have an ocean here. So I'm, I'm not as educated, but when I heard that, about your brand. Um, actually, I was at the Palm Mitchell Hawaii seminar and I got a jar of it. You, you gifted it to all of their attendees, which was so sweet. So tell us about that, your inspiration. And of course, where, cause I, you know, I want you to mention your gorgeous husband that I adore. <laughs> uh, he's in the kitchen, the, the, I have two dogs. And let's just say all the all the boys are in the kitchen. I'm yeah. like, close the door, don't yeah, bark. don't let them. I've got two here. Just give me some time. <laughs> um, well, this is Sombra. So Yay! the first thing when we talk about the ocean is you'll notice that it's not in plastic. Um, it was really important to me to come out with a product that was eco-conscious. And so these are little tins. Uh, I do spend. A majority of my time, not right now, because the borders are closed to California residents, but they're open to Colorado residents to go to California, hopefully, or uh, Costa Rica, hopefully October 1st, California residents will be able to go, because that's where we created this. And it all started, again, with the what can we do here to give back. At the time, I was helping uh, John Paul Mitchell Systems develop the product line Maverick. Yeah. So I was working with their scientists. I mean, I can't say enough nice things like you about the Paul Mitchell community. They're the greatest, just most wonderful family I've and loyal family. I've had the great pleasure of meeting over the years. So never did I think that I would be hired as a consultant and actually working with scientists, which basically meant this is my kit. These are all the products I, I like. And these are our benchmarks. So I started to learn the terminology of working in, in science. This is my favorite grooming cream. This is my favorite pomade. This is this. And we tested all these products. So I started to learn how the formulation process starts. And it was around a 14 month um, research and development uh, program where I got to work with John Mosley and pull the barbers in. So yeah, barbering means a lot to me. Um, Fern, uh, Jason Reyes, and also Brandon uh, Palmore. Those were pretty much my go-to guys as they are professional barbers and I am still a groomer. Yeah. So, to, so the idea was together, how can we develop this next line to, to be friendly for barbers and cosmetologists? So I learned so much. I was so geeked out at their product innovation center which is located in Santa Clarita, which is maybe like 45 minutes from here. And then their main offices are in Century City, so completely opposite sides of town. And when it came to the formulations, I was always in the testing at the Innovation Center. And then when it came to things like packaging or design, then I would have to go over to the office where those graphic designers were. But basically, uh, the project was completed and I had all this Knowledge. Knowledge. About, knowledge, yeah. I had, didn't know what to do with it. You know, you you can't, you can't, you're I'm probably not going to get the opportunity to do something so amazing. I mean, that was 14 SKUs and it was just this awesome, awesome experience. And they're such good friends of mine that um, I thought like, what can I do that would be more in alignment with the friends that I already have, whether that's the hair or skin industry. My husband's a avid surfer. I, I don't, I don't mean once a week. We're talking daily. 
Yeah. And uh, I like to fish in Costa Rica. I like to catch big fish and jump off the boat and be on the water, but I don't really like surfing. So what happened is um, I actually get skin cancer. So I've had all three types, melanoma, um, basal cell carcinoma, and then I can't, sometimes I think I block it because I don't want to admit that I get all the different kinds, but there's this other one um, that shows up like little cracklies. Mm -hmm. So number one is get your skin checked every year. Um, that's really important as an artist. You have to know who the dermatologists are in your area. These are things that you can help your clients with. You got to look at those things. I have spotted on clients before marks that I didn't think were normal. And sure enough, they went to the doctor and yeah. had them removed because maybe they were precancerous. And just think about how much more your client loves you after that, that yeah. you help them. So again, this loyalty with male clients because men are lo more loyal. They just are. Um, and so my husband being the big surfer and knowing that they reuse everything in Costa Rica. So for it's so hot there and it, it is the jungle. Like you, you can't even leave your spices out. You have to put them in the fridge or you will invite <laughs> like ants and weird stuff. And or it'll just get uh, so moist that uh -huh. it's just one big ball of salt oh, or wow. dissolve. And so I was like, oh, what can we use? And then this type of packaging was becoming popular in the surfing community. So it just lined up with everything. I mean, eventually you probably would have to throw it away, but the idea was reusable packaging. So the other thing was, is how to protect the ocean. And I start uh, yourself first and then the ocean. So I started finding out about oxybenzone. And then that led me to what I call the four step brothers or sisters which is avibenzone. That's a big one people are using now. And that has some scientific paperwork uh, studies that have been done on it where avibenzone over time with your average pool chemicals uh, can have a uh, invisible reaction more geared towards your midsection being your stomach, your kidneys, huh. your liver. Now this is over time. If you're in a pinch, number one, Put the sunscreen on. I don't care what's in it. Yeah. But um, it's not going to hurt you once. These are just things over time. You have to think about that. So really the two ingredients that you should only look for uh, for that sun protection is zinc oxide. That's the one that makes people white. And then the other one is titanium dioxide. And it could also be that there's a combination of the two. Okay. If you ever find yourself in Australia, buy all the sunscreen on the shelves because they actually have cleared there. Um, ingredients that our FDA doesn't even allow us to use yet because they are in bed with the big copper tones and the banana boats and the whatever. And the yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're going to have to change, um, you know, like Hawaii has outlawed uh, oxybenzone, but there's also oxacillin, homosylate, and oxyninate. Those are not very good for you either. So first was let's do zinc because the surfers love to be white. I don't want to be a ghost. Mm -mm. So then what we did is uh, we start, I have a friend who's a cosmetic scientist that I did meet through Paul Mitchell. She's so awesome. She had definitely created some of your favorite hair products for them. And, uh -huh. and she and I started talking about what, it, you know, what, what is it that the sun depletes from you? The vitamin A, the vitamin Bs, the, you know, when you burn, why is it that aloe, soothes so we have aloe in here in case you are starting to burn i didn't want anything that went into the skin i wanted more like on the surface layer yeah so that's what zinc oxide does is, is like builds a barrier but i didn't want to be white so what we did is we developed with costa rican scientists based off of that weather system which is hot what will stay have you ever like throwing your sunscreen in your car you flip it open and it explodes yeah or it's really hot or it could separate so our goal was to keep its its character if you will without altering it because what does a guy do he puts it on throws it in the side of his door hits the waves hits the slopes you still got to wear sunscreen mm -hmm. when you're on the slopes oh it's but he's gotten burnt right and so we figured out with the combination of the the oils, the butters, and the ingredients that we used, uh, we narrowed it down to where it would stay stable and it would be protecting you from the things that the sun depletes. 
And if you use, in cold weather, it's hard. So you use the back of your thumb, just like pomade or paste. Yeah. You would use the back of your thumb, you know, warm it up. Warm it up. Mm -hmm. Kind of just press it. You can go like that, you know. But then in the end, kind of press it in. It doesn't sting your eyes. That was really important. So it's kid friendly. Um, and I also, if you want to be white, because maybe you've been in the sun like my husband his whole life and want to create a barrier, just use more. Yeah. But I have it on right now and I just wait 10 minutes before I put my foundation on and I'm fine. Little areas where I have bigger pores, some of the product might get caught in it. But then when I just put my tinted moisturizer over it, totally fine. That's so so cool. this is the first one of many and this one's for face and neck. And can you put it like up in your scalp and stuff too? Like, you yes. Know? Yeah. For the I mean, more, more like so kids. for the, the, like when you're at the beach. Yeah. Because you will get um we all i mean i have super fine hair I yeah i was just gonna say we'll go back to that again i just know yeah. how to work it um but yes i can get burnt on my scalp a lot of guys who are thinning here or in other areas or blondes yeah they you can get um burnt on your scalp daily it might because of the oils and the butters and just how smooth it is could maybe leave you a little greasy but again like if you're doing a day at the beach or skiing who cares well there's there's two things that I really want to bring up here. One, um, we, I'm, I know Melissa's on here watching. She, she waves. She has fine hair too. So she was writing down those products you were giving us earlier. But Melissa is Sola's, you know, big marketing manager. And she oversees a lot of the brands that I introduce her to that goes on Sola Pro. So I would love to get this on Sola Pro. I'll use Sola Watchers. You know, because we can carry our own retail lines in our, our studios, but it sounds like it's it's very global. Like, you can use it in any scenario. So, um, I don't know how you distribute it yet, but we will probably follow up with you on that, Diana. And, uh, and I appreciate you explaining all that. But also, the second thing I wanted to share with everyone is we get more and more... Um, Sola stylists that are developing their own brands like out of their studios because again the sky's the limit and as big as they can dream you can do it at Sola so I just love that you explained that process and and how you learned you know and so much that goes into just this one little dream that you have for this one container and um but but I just think you're such a great resource of like you can make anything happen. You just have to educate yourself. I mean, I definitely never thought as a <laughs> hairdresser that I would learn how to import raw ingredients into a third world country. Yeah. So now I had to learn importing the tin cans. They don't have this in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is not an island, but most things are imported. Um, I, I mean, what you, what you said about the sky's the limit, 100%, as weird as it is, fake it till you make it. I'm a big fan of that. Just be like, oh yeah, of course I knew that. <laughs> Even when you don't, <laughs> um, most of the time you don't. But uh, what a great world we live in today where you know you, you really can find a lot, but now we're back to mentors. You gotta have mentors. Yes. And, be those, and I have some. Um, we did just get FDA approved in America. So now Woo! we have to find, right? And it, it came in at SPF, uh, 42 but we'll always say 40 but it stayed stable and hot and cold it's a huge thing it's not a cheap test you oh. want to fail and um so now we're going to look for manufacturers here and then again full circle now i go back to my paul mitchell friends and say yeah. what is you know who's that laboratory here for manufacturing that that has the most experience with a product like zinc oxide you don't want to go somewhere where they have no experience in, in making that particular or working with that particular cosmetic. So mm -hmm. those, it, I, it's endless, but it's yeah. super fun and rewarding. Well, we're really excited to follow you about that. And I just think it's such a cool product. I, you know, and like, it goes back again, it's um, men, women, kids, everyone will use it. And I love that you explained that to all of us. So, um, Okay, so in some of this, I like to do a little rapid fire questions really quick. And um, I'm not, they're not gotcha or just put you on the spot. It's just kind of fun, you know, to ask you some fun things. So like at Sola, we always say you get to live the life that you love. We've always said that, you know, for 16 years. So, so when you hear that quote, what, is, what does that mean to you? Say it one more time. 
to live the life. Gonna ask, I was scared that you were going to ask me my quote. And I was no, like, no, 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 no. To live the life that you love. Yeah. I, know, I know Costa Rica is going to be in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I think it just, for me, is just being true to yourself and recognizing when um, you are truly happy and when you're not, because nobody's happy all the time. We all have uh, uh, issues and that's okay. Just got to uh, own it and work through them because that feels better and know that however you might be feeling isn't final. I mean, for me, I think I'm right now I'm really coming from the pandemic and the fact that the entire you know, television and film in Los Angeles is completely shut down. We all know that it was only until two weeks ago that salons are open and just to not be considered essential and things like that. That that was definitely a kick in the gut. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. it was. So we, you know, Sola tried to offer as much support as possible, you know, to the whole industry, not just our Sola stylist, just like I'm doing this today. Like anybody can watch any of this and learn from you. And, um, but yeah, globally, it was just like a recession proof industry that we've never seen anything yeah. like it. And, and it's interesting, because it shows your camaraderie with all of us that, that you're just like us, you got a license just like us. And you're a beauty professional. And you know, it affected you in the same way. So good for you for admitting that we did a lot of stuff. I did a, a podcast with a mental health expert you know, because we were going through all these fields. So that's just some of the best advice, Diana, is just to go through them and, and be true to yourself with them. And so you can- Like it's okay them. to feel icky. Some it is, it is. Like normal. And as someone who, you know, maybe I was stressed and I jump on a plane or maybe, well, really that's what I do, you know? <laughs> and now I haven't gone anywhere. I've been home. Uh, my dogs are stoked. I but know, right? <laughs> They're so lovey and like annoying kind of sometimes. I'm like, get off. Like I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> My we just go to the beach and like we come it. back and they're like, where have you been? Where have you been? Um, I but know. You know th this has been a really interesting practice in, in learning to kind of just roll with it. You know, if, if I, I, I mean, I am, very, as you know, very happily married. I married my best friend. So sometimes I'll look at him and be like, I feel stressed or I don't, I just don't feel good today. And he's like, it's okay. Yeah, you can't possibly feel amazing every day. Well, our lives <laughs> completely change, just like everyone's. You know, like out of nowhere. And now your clients are going through their own process, just like our clients in our yeah. chair are going through our own process. Like for kids, can they go back to yeah. school? Can they not? La la la. Same yeah. with yours. We're all just human. And um, okay, so let me let me go into this one. Oh, and I'm going to just say on that note and not feeling well, you know, we've been friends a long time. And I remember you called when you found out I was going through a divorce. And it meant so much to me that you reach out. And I think that's another thing is that you can reach out to people and you can trust, you know, others. And it was cute. You were just real simple. You're like, what can I do? And I was like, well, you could let some of your customers, these gentlemen that you're working on, know that I'm on the market. No. <laughs> you know? I mean, I just, do you remember that? It was awesome. Yeah. But I just love you for that. So, um, oh, here's one. What's the last book that you read that inspired you? Oh, gosh. In this pandemic, honestly, guys, it's been cooking. I cooking. Yeah. yeah. I have just been cooking. I know everybody has. But I am obsessed with Bobby Flay. And I joke all the time that I can beat Bobby Flay because <laughs> I know how to make so, I perfected his burgers. Um, I think a lot more in this time that comes to mind is reading about them and like <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's another one. He's actually a really sweet man, um, Ann Burrell, and kind of like learning the, um, background of some of our favorite food network chefs I, yeah, I love it and my husband is stoked um i definitely got the what do they call it the quarantine 10 pounds or whatever oh yeah but everybody been was working. cooking yeah everybody. so I, I would say all their cookbooks because nice. now i have like a way better collection and then everything online <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome okay i'll ask you one more if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice what would it be <laughs> Don't worry so I much. love that. Don't worry <laughs> oh, so much. Yeah, like at the end of the day, uh, took me a long time to learn this, but 
and I don't mean to discredit what we do. It's just, you have to always put things in perspective. So now I just look at it like I'm a housekeeper. You know, maybe something might happen at a client's house or on a job or this or that, because there's a lot of other people besides the actor there that you have to um, also satisfy. And it's a lot of personalities and everybody's so different. So I think sometimes I'll drive home and maybe carry a little like, did I do that right? Or was that good? Or, you know, I have to wait for the photos to come out. How's it going to yes. look? And yeah, you get a little, little in your head or I leave them and then they go to the carpet. So there's a whole hour that they're alone. And then they're going to be on national TV. Um, but now I just think like, you know what? You're a housekeeper. When if you're lucky enough to have a housekeeper, you know how it works. The only time you think about your housekeeper is when you need your house clean. Yeah. And when your house is clean, <laughs> you're not thinking about your housekeeper. Yeah. And so I, I think I probably would have liked to have learned that a little sooner. You know? I love that. I love that. And friends. save your money. I mean, I did do that. Yeah. But anyone who's young. If this wasn't a good sign to show you that you need to save for a rainy day, no one thought it would be this many rainy days, but save before you get that nice car. Maybe you want to think about a mortgage. Yep. These are things, put things that are, no one's going to remember the car you drove, but they are going to remember how they felt in your house. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I love that. That's such good advice. That's such good advice. That's so awesome. You know, uh, Diana, I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, you just... You just shine in everything that you do and everyone loves you. And I've been at business things with you and personal things with you. And you just are the real deal. And I feel the same about you. You did my hair for the wedding. Oh, yeah, You're that's always right. there for me. We can have fun. We can be serious. We can be goofballs. We can talk about being women. Yeah. Moms. I don't have any children, but I still know can imagine what it's like you know and i just love you so much kimmy i and love you so too and i best. just love that wherever we are we always find a little corner and we yeah. are either eating we do. or getting a drink or just we escaping. do find a corner it's just true. to like just to love on each other and mm -hmm. that's what all of this is about and that's why i'm doing these combos with kimmy and and i love that i can share those relationships with everyone because you are so approachable. I'm looking at the stuff that people are writing. Great advice. And thank you for Aww. your time, Diana. This was great. Can't wait for our paths across. Because, you know, it's harder to get out in front of everyone when we've all been cooped up. And, and this is just such a cool way. I really, really hope that um, we can uh, further, like, um, this relationship with the Sombra brand. Because it's just yeah. so cool. Say it again. Sombra. Sombra. <laughs> I just want to say I kind of thought these looked like Sombra earrings, so I wanted oh, nice. to yeah. And then oh, um, these are. I okay. Mean, it was created in You're like, Central they America. Actually are. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, it actually means shade, or the other Spanish term for it could be shady. Uh -huh. So I thought that was a pretty cool name because shade and shady is kind of, uh, it's just funny. <laughs> it is funny. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, do you want to leave us with anything, you know, any last words of advice? I mean, mostly I just want to say thanks and thanks to everyone at, at Sola because you sing their praises for so many years and everyone's so nice. And I, I have a lot of experience with corporations and how it works for the artist. And I've just always been so impressed and I'm really proud of you and Aww. I'm glad for any person who was smart enough to to find this great community and and it, like I, I can feel that it's family and I can feel that there's support there and that's not how it is for all uh, corporations. Some of them are pretty cold and others are like super warm and fuzzy. So thank you and thanks yeah. to Sola for, for our time together. I love it. Well, we'll it. have to get you on video or we're going to, cool. you know, hopefully next year we'll be doing solo sessions again. Maybe we could get you on stage, you know, and do that some of your fun. magic for some of us. We would love that. that. Great. Okay. Bye. I love you, Diana. Love you too. Thank Come you on. so much. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>